Hey folks, I'm going to show you how I edit. In case you're curious or want to start yourself or already editing and want some extra tips and tricks. 15 years I've been doing this, scouring the internet for as much advice as possible. I'm now going to pass on everything I know to you because that's what the internet is for. Oh, uh, I'll go over equipment and stuff as well I'm using. Listen, if you're starting out, just whatever's available to you, that's the right answer. Uh, I'm going to be wearing these. These are Sennheiser Bluetooth something or others. I'll put the names of everything in the, on screen for you. Uh, they're quite good. I got them for like 80 euros six years ago. Many audiophiles will say you need a wired connection, but it's 2024. Jesus. Who wants wired? I go Bluetooth. Ah, now I look like a fucking dork. I'm ready to edit. Okay, naturally you're going to record a bunch of footage. I'm going to be showing you how I edit a gaming video for my show called Platinum Journey, which documents the highs and lows of getting a platinum trophy in some brilliant games. The game in question is The Last of Us Part 1. Uh, recording stuff, maybe I'll show you that some other day. But if you got a camera on hand, if you got a laptop camera, if you got a webcam or you got your phone, any recording device works. Similar principles. If you are working on a movie, Go talk to somebody else. I don't want to work on movies. So naturally, when I have all this footage, you might go, what the fuck is this? Let's make it easy for you. So these are all the gameplay clips, part one, part two. And I might have like, they made a note, Joel and Tess on a date. Firefly pendant trophy, they're on a date, part one. I'm recording on camera. You see like half an hour there. I think I've got about 14 hours of footage and I'm not on camera for every step of the way. Because if I'm just picking up a firefly pendant, there's a 30 second clip, which is a collectible. I don't need to be on camera for that. That's fair enough. So you're gonna have all this footage and you're gonna bring it into your, you know, let's just make a new project. I'll go over keyboard shortcuts as well, don't you worry. But uh, example, okay. And put you up there in assets, put you up in assets. Okay, this is what I generally have set up in the layout, but we're not going to get to here yet, ladies and gentlemen. No, no, no. We have a bunch of raw audio to figure out. So for editing audio, the raw audio, I use Adobe Audition, but Audacity, you might notice back here, is what I'm currently recording in. Similar principles across everything. I'm going to be editing in Adobe Premiere, but you can use Final Cut Pro, Avid, or an awful lot of folks these days are using DaVinci Resolve. You can get a free version, which is quite powerful. Adobe take the piss with their pricing. I'm getting on the edge of being throwing my hands up in the air. I'm like, fuck you, Adobe. I'm out. Da Vinci's looking mighty appealing. So taking this audio, which is raw, right here at the beginning, what I do on camera, I can actually show you. So if you've got camera, if you've got gameplay, if you've got multiple cameras, and if you've got audio, or if you've got Clip on audio, you might be able to see over here, which is clipped on there. Uh, by the way, that is the wrong placement for a lavalier microphone. Lavalier microphone should not be right under the chin. That's not good. If you watch any TV show, talk show host, they will have it kind of on a suit around here. You want to like right in the middle of the chest is good. Uh, ideally, what I should be doing is I should be taking the lavalier mic and going up the top and kind of like taping it to my chest, which I've tried before, but it's a bit uncomfortable. Also, maybe not underneath the chin, you should do it off the side, that doesn't look nice. The wonderful thing about making any sort of video is you can just tailor it to your own needs and it's fine. So in terms of the slating, what they normally call it, you might see on movie sets, they go like, scene 14, take two. That's the same principle. You're creating a sync point. And that comes through in the audio here. Now, there's gonna be something called room tone. Every single room has it, this room has it. If you're working on a movie, you actually want to save the room tone for when characters are doing dialogue. You want a room tone underneath, so it's not so like... There's silence and there's uneasy silence. If like there's literally no audio in a scene, it's just like fucking weird. But we're gonna have gameplay in the background and we're gonna have music and voiceover. I want the cleanest possible audio. Keyboard shortcuts, ladies and gentlemen. You get yourself a big old keyboard. And you figure out where you want to put these things. Oh, by the way, any keyboard will do. I got this in a Thai market six years ago. 
Beer has been spilt on it. Tea has been spilt on it. Coffee has been spilt on it. I've popped off the keys and cleaned them. Still going strong. Uh, the Microsoft keyboard I had for all of two years. Couldn't even survive one beer spill. Chuck that thing in the bin. What you want to do first is noise reduction and restoration. You can already see here noise reduction. So you want to bring up keyboard shortcuts. Alt and K. You might be able to see what they've already got mapped for you that will help out. I've changed things around. But if there's anything you're doing quite a lot of, see if there's a keyboard shortcut assigned to it or over there in the search, normalize or noise reduction. And you might say, look, noise reduction process. K, brilliant. That's what I've said to you. I don't know what the original is. So you hit K. Capture the noise print. It will tell you it looks like this. Select entire file. Apply. Boom, that's good. Now I know that these are pretty fucking loud. I want to bring these down a bit. Once again with them highlighted. Amplify is what I use. So once again. What is amplify? Amplify. I've set it to I. But if you want to figure out where it is. Amplify. There it is. I set it to I. You might notice these three, actually these five, are what I use the most. I normalize, sorry, I noise reduction, amplify, normalize to negative 0.1 decibels, parameter EQ, and a single band compressor. These are what I use the most. I group them all together. So I know amplify, bidoop, negative six. I normally do it a second time. And then control F to see everything, control A to select everything. Now uh, it's a bit quiet. So I use the normalize to negative 0.1 decibels. That's probably too loud. But for whatever reason, when you bring it from Adobe Audition into Adobe Premiere, fucking works out. I don't know why. Although you might notice over here, why is that so goddamn loud? Damn, it's good to be back with Joel and Ellie. That's me being very excited. We're going to leave it. So now comes the age old question. Equalization first or compression? I don't have the right answer. And I've fucking tossed and turned about it. So what I end up doing is this. Effects, amplitude and compression. Where is it? Single band compressor. And filter and EQ, parametric equalizer. L to bring up the parametric equalizer. Now in general, a low and a half high pass filter. Copy down everything, folks. I didn't figure this out. Other people did. Anything under around here, we just don't we need. We all have our happy place. And anything For above, me. you can see we also don't need. So we're going to take all this. People do it. It seems to work out. Again, we're just cleaning up the audio. Other folks will do more equalization for compression. You might want to do that. For me, I just prefer doing it after compressions. Like this is the fine tuning. About 80% of how your audio sounds is going to be based on the room you're in. So in the room you're in, that's bad. Big wide room echoey room bad you want to have like curtains on the wall i don't know a bookshelf put down carpets put down pillows put down duvet covers dampen the sound as much as possible as for compression negative 16 2.8 to 100 zero anything above three and a half you're pushing it a bit far i normally go 2.8 it seems to work boom see what that does wow everything's Pretty fucking quiet now, isn't it? So normalize back to zero. You can also create an effects rack over here and just stack them all on top of each other, like your normalization first. But for me, I'd rather just do it one by one in case I notice anything along the way. Like again, what's this over here? Oh, what do you know? That's me slating. So let's uh, reduce that because that's not needed. Now the fun equalization, the trying to figure out where stuff sounds really shitty. Anytime you're working with audio to make it sound better, subtraction before addition. If you say like, oh, wow, it's a bit tinny sounding. Let's add more bass. Subtraction before addition. So I know that if I raise my voice, the room is not, it's, it's a general sitting room. It's not going to be absolutely perfect. In fact, where is it? Yeah, like we're here, you know? In front of me is a TV and well, there was one carpet down. I didn't have any like curtains up. It's an okay room. It's not great. So what we do is we all have our happy place. Bingo, bango. We take a little snippet, a little snippet. We set that fucker on to loop. And then we come back over here. 
and we're going to do something called EQ sweeping. If you're a true audio engineer, you'll be able to do this masterfully. I'm not, and I've driven myself fucking insane trying to figure this out. We all have our happy. So place. what you want to do is and for me, we all boost have this our by about eight. Place. And for me, we all and you just have sweep our along until you find out what me, sounds dreadful. We all have our happy place. Annoys your ear. And for me, we all have our Ooh, happy place. See that? And for me, we all have our happy place. There it place. is. And for me, and for me, so I'm going to crush that by negative four. Place. Me, we all have our happy mm. place. And for me, we all have our happy place. And for me, folks, you can drive yourself for me, demented doing this and even question your own place. logical sense. And for me, I'm just going to do that and call it a day. Happy place. And for me, but normally, kind of, if it's a bit roomy and echoey, around here is fine. And if it's really bad up around here, rarely will down here be a problem. Unless you're just like eating the microphone. Apply that. If that doesn't work out for you, you can just skip this step entirely. Just create a better room to record audio into. Microphones these days are so good that they will make you sound pretty solid, no matter what. Unless you're in like a church or a cathedral trying to record audio, then you're screwed. You bring everything in and you're about to start your brand new project. And you might want to create some bins or some folders. I don't know why they're called bins, even though the icon is a folder. Adobe are just weird. I have all these named out. You can name whatever the hell you want. Assets, which is probably wrong. I've got backups for every step of the process. Ink transitions, narration, uh, face cam. That's all this sort of stuff. You'll be bringing in your footage. And there's some things you can do better on the keyboard and some things you can do better on the mouse. You can do, you click on this and then activate it and then hit, I think it's like that. Or you can just drag and drop. Either one is fine. So let me show you how to sync things up a bit quicker than probably a lot of you are doing. So one thing is Adobe Premiere does have quite, what the fuck did I do there? Oh yeah, I made a mistake when I was recording. I forgot. Bit, hang on. There we go. I made a mistake during the recording. Actually, watch me realize I've made the mistake. Oops. <laughs> All right. So highlighted these two because these are all going to sync together. And once again, synchronize. Application clip, synchronize, control, shift, S. Wonderful. We don't have to go in here and try and like match them together frame by frame frame and like moving a little, little bit no 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 let the computer do it boom you figure it out and then uh, another thing i've mapped is control l yeah clip link control l so i've unlinked these two and now they're separate and then this one again control l now those two are thing i can get rid of this sucker this Another keyboard shortcut I have, uh, if you're doing a multicam edit in the defaults, we'll have up here, one, two, three, four, five, C select cameras. This, if you're doing a multicam edit, I don't do multicam edits. Well, I've only got two cameras, the gameplay and myself. So I put one to projects, two to program monitor, source monitor, timeline, effects, controls, effects, and then I don't use the rest. So for example, if I press one, I'm over here, two, here, three here, four down here, and five, the effects. Pretty handy. So for example, if I want to look at this clip, I can either just be over here and go, boom. Actually, you know where it comes really handy is, listen to music. This is all the music. So instead of doing this and then hitting spacebar to listen, I can just do, okay. One, down, enter, play. Just instead of click, click, you know, less clicking. Press five, and then we want to make this little fecker a bit smaller, don't we? And I already know what we're going to do with them. Scale is going to be 40. And then motion, bring this little guy over here. There you go. This is how I watch back all the footage. But it's not in sync, is it? No, no, no. This is where I do mic to game. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. 
So you see, I'm trying to clip it in with time. Mic to game. One, two, one, two, two. There we go. This is where the human has to do things. So you'll do that with all your clips. Syncing them up, getting ready to make stuff. And then I have my backup here of everything synced up. And you see there's no lot of gameplay and stuff over there. Then there's just random, I think, Joel and Tess on a date. Yeah, Firefly Pendant, you know, you don't need that Joel and Tess on a date. Just characters talking to each other. Then I'm on camera again, bit more gameplay stuff on the camera. Just random gameplay encounter stuff. I'm on camera. You can see the kind of works. In total, the timeline is 15 hours long. Also, a real fun thing. I've done a little bit of trimming. Watch this. Control Shift C. Hey, close all gaps. 12 hours 50. Again, that is close gaps. Oops. Close gap. Control Shift C. It's a nice little handy way of like, what do I really have? Voice over. Naturally, when recording voice over, do two takes of every single line. Something might go wrong. I normally like to dump it at the very end of the timeline because, is it audio? Where did I put it? Narration. There we go. And I have only having its own track. Also, bring stuff up and down the track. Alt up, alt down, alt down. And then make sure this thing is highlighted and this and this. So if you go, for example, if this isn't highlighted and I press down on the keyboard to go to the next clip, nothing happens. If it is highlighted and I press down, Bingo, it works. For some folks, audio editing is annoying and boring and dull and takes far too much time. Because this is what? How long is it? 50 odd minutes? 55 minutes. Quite a lot to go through. Oh yeah, also zoom in, zoom out for me is A and D. A and D. Basically, I want one hand on this and one hand on the left side of the keyboard. So what you might see here, ripple trim, Add edit to all tracks, ripple trim next, rate stretch, add edit to all tracks. I don't know why I've done that. I yeah. D for delete or clear, zoom out, zoom in, track select, mark clip, razor tool. That's the default. That's the default. Default, 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 default. Some things are better on the mouse. Some things are better on your hand. Ripple trim back, Q, boop. And this is where this guy is no longer needed. L to go forward, Q to pause, J to go back. And then ripple trim, Q backwards, F to add an edit, or W to add it, E to go forward. So hit play. Things change. I can listen back at twice speed or even triple speed because I wrote it and did the voiceover. I know what's being said. If it's somebody else's audio, I'm going to go at normal speed or double speed at the most. Things change. So if there's an error. No matter what. The last of us. My mouth felt a bit too moist, so that is awful. We're going to go ahead and delete that. So then you go the through and go, in my life. okay, that's grand. Control Z to undo things. And now Thailand. Joel and Ellie are always by my side. Yep. Joel and Ellie are always at my side. So that's a second take. Add edit. Joel and Ellie are always at my side. To do, you don't have to be too exact on this. Not sure if it's possible to express how deeply I love Lazarus. But I'll try. I know that. Things change when I got. Second take. My life. From my old bedroom, Croatia, Vietnam, back to Ireland, Bulgaria, and Thailand. Joe and Ellie are always at my side. Maybe nervous about making this episode? Not sure if I can. Not sure if it's possible to express how deeply I love Lazarus. To do. 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 To 55 minutes, you should be able to get through that. Not you should, but in general, you can get through that in under 30 minutes. Especially if you wrote it yourself. Oh, and then I'm going back to the beginning. I press the home key to go back and the end key goes to the end of things. Oh, and another little thing I do, um, you might notice this entire thing here is, why is that there? I mute audio one and I put you over here and then I crush this over here. So I have any track or any clip that I know I'm not gonna use the audio, I just put it on that. Instead of just bringing the video down, because you might need the audio later for something you don't know, I use my entire muted track. Think I got you up to speed on how to clickety clack. Main principle is anything you find yourself doing a lot, bring up keyboard shortcuts and see if there is one for it. And if not, figuring out what you're doing might be the hardest part. <laughs> but yeah, if there's like a clip or what's quite handy is if normally if you hover over things, it will tell you what they are. Hands tool, so if you're using that a lot, I don't know why, or type tool, which is, I believe, control T. Yep. 
Also, that's Z to select everything ahead. You can do it this way as well. Boop. And if you hold shift, you can just do that. You can select an individual track. Boop. See? No matter what, ah, this is also something I realized when recording this. It sounds a bit bassy. Things change. But no so in terms of microphone placement when recording voiceover, once again, your environment matters the most. When I record, I put down towels on the hardwood desk, and then I get a duvet cover over my head, over the laptop, sound damp, make it like a little sound booth for myself. In terms of microphone placement, many different theories, it's all going to depending on your voice. In general, you want it off to the side about 45 degrees, because you're not speaking directly into it, you're not getting plosives. Uh, I'm using a Shure SMB75, but in past I've also used I've also used the Audio Technica AT2020 USB microphone. They can be fine, although this one definitely does pick up plosives. Um, so just shove on those things on it. This generally, though, I normally don't need any sort of my pop filter. Put off 45 degrees. Um, if you get good enough at voiceovers, you won't need a pop filter. 45 degrees and if you watch professional voiceover artists or people who do dubbing for animated movies the microphone is normally actually above them i'm gonna go ahead and guess that's the best way to do it however so if you got like a boom mic like a little bit elevated pointing down at you or if you just got a regular stand trying to elevate it a bit for me personally i found like around here kind of pointing a little bit up a little bit center is fine however for this recording i don't know why i just sounded a bit bassier than normal Things change. Didn't like it. So you can go into Audio Track Mixer. And uh, this, let me just show you for a second. A1, A2, A3, and A4. So this affects everything on these tracks. I'm on A4. You might even, you know, change the name to voiceover or narration. You can adjust the volume, or you can actually see what the current volume is and where it's coming to. Things change. Negative six will give an exact no reading. Uh, so let's go into this amplitude and compression, and very bluntly, you could do the parametric EQ, but I'm just going to go to bass and say, let's bring you down by about two. Again, subtraction before addition. Things change. But Can no you what, hear the difference? The last of us. Maybe. <laughs> but it'll be better for the long term. All right, we have this nice things to say about The Last of Us, the video game. Logging footage. You can just use a Word doc, or this is a Google doc. Log, part one. This is actually... So I'll go back and watch everything. I... What the hell is this thing? I don't know. Go back and watch everything and time coded at 2.30 this happens, starting a new game, opening cutscene, Sarah in some people's connection, taking my sweet time with this. This is just, I'm logging everything that happens. Everything that happens. So that later on, if I'm trying to find a particular clip, because this is a, I don't know, however long this entire segment is, like, where did I say this is my happy place? Oh, um, happy place there, 2.30, brilliant. I then know if I click on this, and it's all time-coded to the gameplay clip. Pick exact one, don't pick this one, and then this one, pick one. This one's 2.30, that's 2.50, so this would be about 2.30, or this one. There it is, 2.35. I know that this clip is going to be the Have one. our happy place. And sure enough, there it is. Uh, I'll show you what the final one looks like. Find your track which is a forest melody. Find what you want to go with it. First of all, uh, the birds chirping is actually part of the audio track, the music track. That was kind of perfect. Don't have to do much to it. Then add in a little bit. I found this beautiful clip of Ellie and Joel just talking to each other. The last was is these Characters will be walking along and they'll say something profound to each other. So I found this. You're friends with the leader of the Fireflies. What are you, like, 12? She knew my mom. And she's been looking after me. And I'm 14. Not that that has anything to do with... Forget all that. 
So bring in that. Have a little snippet of the tool I'm talking. Bring in just that audio snippet. That I'll use the audio. And then characters Friends not talking to each other. Just find stuff that looks cool. That looks cool. They're not even facing each other. Bring down the... Oh, this is a fun thing for audio editing. Sorry, for audio mixing. Keyboard shortcut I found out. Raise and decrease volume of keyframes. Do to do to do do to do to do. Before, I have to go up here and then click it down here and be like, okay, set that to that, set this to this, set that to that. If you control and click, you can add a keyframe and then plus and down, plus and down, plus and down. Let me show you what this looks like. And so keyframe again, just figure out where there's. Select next keyframe, shift plus, and then plus the number, shift plus negative on the number, and then the volume, decrease clip volume, decrease clip volume many, and I put it to negative on the number pad and plus the number pad, and then you can do shift and the square bracket. What's quite handy is if I'm here and I want to do some audio mixing, where the playhead is right here, I can hold down shift and press plus, I can go this keyframe, Minus, go this keyframe, minus, minus, minus. I might say, you know what, this is actually a bit loud. So let's decrease. You can even see it move up there in the top right. We're going louder, we're going quieter. And this one actually lets the you follow suit. Comes in a bit softer. You're friends with Maybe the leader that's of fireflies. What are you, like 12? And then we bring it up again. So for this, I've got in-game audio. Yeah, down. There it is. Just sound of like rustling. In the movies, they call that Foley. Thankfully, the game does it for us. Control up, control down. Control up, control down. I like the, the I don't know if they're called cicadas or crickets. Probably. That's kind of cool. So, brought those two in. And then once a little bit more, so I added in. Sound design, folks. It's fun. So where are your parents? And then the sigh, and she says that wonderful line, where are anyone's parents? Well, it's not wonderful, it's fucking depressing, but... Where are anyone's parents? Oh, okay, okay, easy. Is this your fault? Unfortunately, there's a bit of an error there. I couldn't separate the in-game music to my own, because... Oh, okay, okay, easy. Is this your fault? It was too good not to use, so... You've been gone a long, long time. And then I wanted a little bit extra, so you might notice here. That's just brought in there. Little subtle, little subtle, little subtle, little subtle. Long time. Things change, but no matter what, the last of us... Are so, main principle of audio mixing is what you want to be at the forefront. Voice over. Handy little guide for you. In general, voice over negative four decibels. May negative four never gives ah negative four. Peak of negative four. On camera stuff like talking, like if it's a lavalier microphone or just um uh, like a smartphone you're recording off of negative three. Music, negative 15 to negative 18, depending on the soundtrack. Actually, sometimes negative 21 or 24. For example, these are just guitars and not change, that busy. But no matter what, so I kept around negative 17, even it's rising a bit. Uh, sound effects can be negative 15 to negative 6, depending on sound effects. You know when you're watching a movie and for whatever reason their audio mixing these days is so terrible that all the characters who talk are just like... Da, da, da. I want to know what people are saying. That's the most important thing to me. This right here is a vignette. Turn it off. Turn it on. Turn it off. Turned on. Just makes things a bit more central. I didn't enable it for these two because it's already on there and it's already on there. Audio cross dissolve. For love of God, please start doing it. Some of you are terrible. This is just a little thing. It's already mapped to control shift D, I believe. So do this. It just makes it a bit One for smoother transition. Every item. Turning off the spotlight generator without being spotted in Pittsburgh. Writing the all these you can just look up a tutorial, just look up how to do handwriting. It's not perfect. The seven is bad. Look at the seven. Boop. 
That's fine. <laughs> Uh, and then in terms of how to make the colors, color replace, and uh, before it was white. And then I just picked for a color picket. I picked this and just picked the bronze color. Bingo bango. In terms of how to make this little thing, which is kind of cool. It's called track mat keying. So you set a track underneath it. You have all this there. Yeah, my little ink transition. And then you set a track mat key to video six, which is the ink transition. Mat to the alpha, because that's what works. And then reverse it. Because if you don't reverse it, you get this. <laughs> it reveals and we want it to make disappear. I had a big spot on the day. That was unfortunate. Oh, well. That's life. When I'm doing the live stuff, it's a bit more fine tuning with things. As you might notice here, cross constant powering out. And then because I wanted the dip to black here, I raised that up. And then we do a nice little other segment. We're about to hit a milestone in human history equal to the dis I like that sound effect. Joel picking up the Time to write there. The discovery of penicillin. Yeah. After years of cool. wandering in color correction. Let's take not you because that's going to be fine. Let's actually take the uh, uh, and a handy thing you can do, ladies and gentlemen. Big smile and face is you can. Oh, I applied it right onto it. Okay, let's turn you off and then let's turn that off. So your eyes will lie to you, and I'm someone who's been diagnosed as some form of color blindness. So you do this, you create a little mask just for the skin tone. And you do something here called Lumetri Scopes. And this line is known as the skin tone line. It doesn't matter what skin color you have, this is the skin tone line. Now Adobe Premiere will tell you, that there's something that is obsolete called the fast color corrector. So hang on, let's just actually delete, delete. Apply the fast color corrector, and this is very fun because you take the hue angle and watch what happens. It just goes with it. So I know if mine is normally like negative 12. Oops, maybe not that far. Negative nine, maybe negative eight, and that's fine. And then we can disable the mask, have a little before and after look. Boom. Now, again, your eyes do deceive you. Know, I think sometimes it's a bit too much. So I kind of reduce the saturation a bit. Again, my eyes are probably lying to me, but that's the way it works. A bit less pink. Then in order to Okay, you can do. You can go again. You can go bloody nuts with this. I normally just like to set this thing over here. I used to try and what's known as crushing the blacks, but because I wear a black T-shirt, it means you'd bring everything down. If you, I found on YouTube compression, if you bring the backs too far down, you end up getting like quite pixelated, and maybe it still does. So I've, st I used to do like this to try and bring blacks down as much as possible. But YouTube just makes that a big block, so I said, forget all that. But what I do like is up here around, you can see it's, I'm in a white wall. So I normally like to bring it down to about 80. Around 80 is fine. That will do me. You can actually, if you want, you can go check the game you're playing and see where they match their colors and then get it similar or whatever scenes you're working on. And that would be my color correction. Color grading is when you stylize. I do color correction. I just want to look normal. And then I add a vignette because vignettes are cool. All right, that is a lot of information to undertake. If you have any further questions, let me know. I'll try to answer them as best as I can. And uh, yeah, that's how I edit videos. Have a nice day. <laughs> oh my god, I'm running out of steam. I could not make it as a teacher, ladies and gentlemen. No way. I'm an hour in. I'm, I'm finished talking. I kind of want to just be quiet now. Anyway, take care of yourself.